When should you start your old age security benefit? When should you start OAS? Should you start early at age 65 or should you start late at age 70? And if you do choose to start late at age 70, how long until you reach break even? In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into OAS, old age security break even. Now there are two important differences when it comes to OAS break even versus CPP break even. We're gonna cover those both in this video. If you watched our recent video about CPP breakeven, you'll know that investment returns are a big factor when calculating the CPP breakeven point. There is a big opportunity cost when delaying your CPP benefits. If you haven't watched that video, we'll put a link in the description for this video. Now we won't go over all the details again in this video, but the basic premise is that there is an opportunity cost when you delay CPP and old age security. The higher your expected investment returns, the bigger that opportunity cost is. This can make it slightly more attractive to delay benefits if you're a conservative investor versus an aggressive investor, or if you have higher investment fees versus lower investment fees. Again, watch that previous video on the CPP breakeven analysis if you wanna see details of that CPP break even. Now, my name is Owen. I'm an advice only financial planner and a CFP, and I focus on retirement planning. And I can tell you that it's fairly rare that we delay OAS benefits within a retirement plan. If we're going to delay any benefit at all, it's usually going to be the CPP benefit, and only in specific scenarios, specific circumstances, will we actually choose to delay OAS or old age security. Now, when it comes to OAS breakeven, there are two important considerations, and one of them is the actuarial adjustment. Now, when you delay from age 65 to 70, you get an adjustment, an increase, an incentive for delaying your benefits for those five years. For CPP, that benefit is 42%. You get 42% more if you delay CPP from age 65 to 70. But for old age security, that actuarial adjustment, that incentive, to delay your benefit is only 36%. Now that 6% difference may not seem like a lot, but it does have a very big impact on the OAS breakeven point. Now let's go through a simple but wrong OAS breakeven calculation. Now we did the same thing for the CPP benefit. So again, if you wanna watch that in detail, we'll put a link to the CPP breakeven video in the description for this video. Now when we think about old age security at 65 versus 70, we first want to identify how much we would receive at age 65. And we're just gonna use a round number of 750 a month, but this is fairly close to the current maximum for old age security. Now, if you were to delay until age 70, you'd get 36% more. So you'd get $1,020 a month instead of $750 a month. The difference there is $270 a month. So if you delay until age 70, you're gonna get an extra $270 a month assuming that your age 65 amount was $750. Now those five years of payments that you're giving up by delaying your OAS benefit, they're worth about $45,000 in this example. So 750 a month times 12 months times five years gives us $45,000 of missed payments that we need to make up. Now we get an extra $270 a month at age 70, so how long does it take to make up those payments? Well, it takes about 167 months to reach the break-even point. Now, if we start at age 70 and add 167 months, which is roughly about 14 years, that means that our break-even age for delaying OAS from 65 to 70 is age 84. Now, this is quite a bit higher than the age for the CPP break-even analysis. So again, this is why if we're gonna delay any benefit, it's usually gonna be CPP instead of old age security. Now this was a simple old age security OAS breakeven analysis. We didn't include the impact of investment returns at all. So now let's go through a more detailed OAS breakeven where we include the impact of investment returns. Okay, so here we've got our projection. We've got uh, Mary here. Mary is age 65, just started retirement. Mary will start old age security later this year when Mary turns 65 uh, and we'll get about $8,700 per month uh, starting at age 65. Now let's take a look at the investment plan first. So right now, Mary, we're assuming is a conservative investor uh, or balanced investor with 60% in equities at 2% fees. And we've got about 40% in fixed income at 2% fee. 
So the expected rate of return here is quite low. Again, fees are dragging on the investment returns. So we're expecting about 3.4% long-term returns for Mary. Now let's rerun the two projections here. Let's look at OAS at age 65. Let's rerun OAS at age 70. And then let's go to the compare tab here and let's compare those two scenarios. So again, we're starting off at the same starting point here, um, but if we delay OAS until age 70, there is an opportunity cost. So we can see if we start OAS at age 70, we're drawing down on the investment portfolio as we're waiting for OAS to begin. This means that the portfolio is lower at age 70, but of course we get higher payments. So at some point those payments start to catch up. So where is that point where we reach the crossover where the payments start to catch up? Well, it's actually past that age 84 break even, and it's not until age 87. So delaying OAS from 65 to 70, when we include the impact of investment returns, we're at age 87 for the break even point. And that's with a fairly balanced portfolio with high investment fees. Now let's see what happens if we change those investment fees and we increase the expected rate of return. So let's change it again to a 1% fee. And we did the same thing in the CPP break-even analysis. So now we've got a 4.4% expected return. Let's rerun those two scenarios. So we've got OAS at 65, OAS at 70. Let's go back to the compare tab. We've got a slightly higher opportunity cost. And where do we get to break even? This is really far out here. Age 90. So with even a very reasonable 4.4% expected return, the break even point, including the opportunity cost for delaying OAS from 65 to 70 is at age 90. So it's quite far out there. This is why we typically don't delay old age security within a retirement plan. Now let's go even more assertive here with the investment returns. Let's assume a quarter percent fees, so low fees. Let's assume an 80% allocation to equities, uh, and let's assume a 20% allocation to fixed income. So this gives us an expected rate of return of 5.8%, 5.8% expected return. Let's rerun the two analysis. So 65, OAS at 65, OAS at 70. And now let's take a look at the compare tab. So again, higher uh, opportunity cost here. And where do we get to break even? I don't even think we get to break even. 94, basically 95. Part of the estate, there's probably a bunch of estate tax because maybe we're delaying uh, some of those RSP withdrawals in the age 65 example. But basically not until mid 90s, uh, early to mid 90s, do we get to that OAS break even point if we have a fairly reasonable uh, expected rate of return of about 5.8%. And this is why expected rate of return has such a big impact on the break-even point. If you even have a reasonable portfolio with reasonable fees, a reasonable asset allocation, it can be very, very difficult to reach that break-even point because of the opportunity cost of delaying those benefits for five years between 65 and 70. Now, the second important factor when deciding to delay your old age security benefit is the OAS clawback. For those who aren't familiar, your OAS benefit can be reduced. It can be reduced at a rate of 15% of taxable income above a certain income threshold. That threshold is currently between 90 and $100,000, but it does go up every year with inflation. Now, the reason why this is important is because you could have a large taxable event between age 65 and 70 that could reduce your old age security benefit even to zero. And it could be a sale of a cottage, a vacation property, or maybe a rental property. Any of those could trigger a large capital gain that could reduce your old age security benefit to zero for a year or possibly more. You could also have a large capital gain in a non-registered investment account, or you could just be making large RSP RIF withdrawals from a large RSP RIF account. Any of those things could trigger a lot of taxable income, which then changes the old age security break-even analysis. So let me show you how old age security break-even point can change if you're expecting to have a large capital gain, a large reduction in your OAS benefit between the age of 65 and 70. I'm gonna show you why maybe delaying your OAS benefit until age 70 might be a good decision if you expect a large capital gain or some sort of taxable event between age 65 and 70. Now this was our previous break-even analysis. 
Uh, we saw it where the breakeven point was at age 87. This is with a more balanced portfolio with higher investment fees. Now let's see how this changes if we add a OAS clawback between the age of 65 and 70. So let's go back to projections here. We're going to make a copy of the age 65 OAS scenario. And then we're going to add a OAS uh, clawback. So let's uh, call this OAS clawback. And to simulate this, we're just going to go down to the table here. We're going to go to Mary's income and we're going to reduce the OAS benefit to zero for a certain year. And maybe Mary is selling a rental property. Maybe there's a large capital gain, sale of a vacation property, something that is causing the OAS benefit to be reduced to zero for that specific year. Now let's recalculate this. And then we're going to go back to that compare tab to compare the two options. So again, our previous example, we had OAS break even at age 87. But if I include the OAS clawback year, now the break even point is only age 84. So if we expect to have a large reduction in OAS benefits anytime between 65 and 70, then perhaps delaying your OAS benefit until that event has happened might make more sense. It moves up that break-even point. In this case, it moves it up by about three years. So again, depending on your situation, depending on your investment returns, depending on your opportunity cost, depending on what sort of taxable events you might expect between 65 and 70, this all affects the OAS break-even point. OAS and CPP break-even are very specific to your situation. We saw how investment returns or OAS clawbacks can impact the CPP and OAS break-even points. It's very important to create a retirement plan that is specific to your situation. If you haven't already, you can use the advice platform to create a retirement plan. You get access to the entire software platform, all of the AI strategies. If you just go to advice.ca, click the For Clients tab, you can get started. It's just $9 a month or the annual option is just $49 for the year. It's extremely accessible. We have a community forum for support and we do bi-monthly webinars as well, looking at case studies and different retirement planning examples. If you don't have a retirement plan yet, I would highly encourage you to get one started. As we just saw, you wanna have a retirement plan that is specific to your situation, your circumstances, your goals and values. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love it if you like and subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.